Good morning. Lovely to be with you. I'm Rev Jill and I'm leading our collective worship this morning. So I've got everything we need in this box. The Bible and our story this morning is coming from the Old Testament from the book of Esther. We put our cross out and a candle which we'll light in a minute to remind us that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Now in here I've also got one or two things to give us a clue about what the story is about. The book of Esther. So here we have a rather glorious crown. So maybe that suggests to you the story could be about a king or a queen or maybe both. And I've got a dinner plate with a knife and fork. So maybe a meal is involved or a banquet, which is a posh meal. And a star. And the star actually is the heroine of the story, Esther herself. So we'll light the candle and we'll say together, Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can quench. So reading to you from the book of Esther. Esther was a star, a beautiful Jewish girl chosen by the king of Persia to be his queen. Esther had an uncle called Mordecai who was very kind and when Esther's parents died he brought her up as his own daughter and when she was made queen he warned her not to tell the king that she was a Jew, that she had come from one of the king's captive lands. And so the king was pretty clueless. He loved Queen Esther, but he didn't know that she was a Jew. Now there was a man called Haman and he was horrible. He was the king's right hand man and he loved nothing more than being mean to people, pushing them around and bullying them. Now one day Haman was walking through the city when he met some of the king's other servants. Bow down before me, horrible Haman commanded. And they bowed, everyone except Mordecai, Esther's uncle. He said, I will bow before no one but God. Haman was furious and went straight to the king to seek his revenge. There is a troublesome race of people in our land, he said, who worship a different God. They're the Jews, your majesty. Give me your permission and I will kill them all. The king was pretty clueless, so he told horrible Haman to kill every Jew in the land, not knowing that he was condemning his own queen, Esther. When Mordecai, Esther's uncle, heard the news, he went straight to see Esther. Go to the king, he said, and do what you can to save us quickly. But I have to wait for the king to invite me, Esther explained. I can't go to see him without an invoca invitation. The law of the Persian says that the king has the right to kill me if I do. You must go anyway, said Mordecai. Whatever the risk, God puts people in places for just the right time so that they can do what he wants. It might be that God has put you in the palace for just such a time as this. Esther was a star. She went to see the king and far from being angry, the king was delighted to see her. What do you want, my darling? he asked. I want to have a dinner party, 
a banquet, said Esther, and I want to invite your right-hand man, Haman. The king agreed. The date was set, and horrible Haman was happy. He'd been building a horrible hanging machine in his garden where he hoped to kill Mordecai, Esther's uncle. And the queen's invitation made him happier even still. But when he got to the banquet, horrible Haman was suddenly not so happy. I have had some sad news today, said Esther with tears in her eyes. Someone wants to see me dead, and not only me, but all of my people too, all the Jewish people. Who is this person? shouted the king. Tell me, and he will soon be dead instead. There he is, said Esther, and she pointed at Haman. I, I, I don't understand, Haman trembled. I, I, I've done nothing against you. Yes, you have, said Esther, for I am a Jew, and you mean to kill us all. The king was no longer clueless. He saw everything clearly now. He loved his queen Esther. He didn't care that she was a Jew, but he was very angry with Haman. Put him to death, the king ordered. And so Haman was hanged on his very own hanging machine in his garden. But Esther and Mordecai and all the Jewish people lived on, lived on to return to their own land. And all because Esther was a star. Now, I wonder what part of that story you like the best. And I wonder what part of the story was the most important. I wonder how Esther felt when Mordecai said to her, maybe you're in the palace for such a time as this. Maybe God wants you to go and speak up for the Jewish people. Maybe that's why he put you here as queen to the king. I wonder how she felt. I wonder if you can remember when you had to stand up for something that knew, you knew was right. I wonder how it made you feel. You have to be quite brave, don't you? Well, let's just think about that a little bit more um, over the next few days and weeks, what God might be calling us to stand up for. It might be something um, close to home, close to school, in the vicinity, or it might be something on a much larger scale, a global issue, something for the environment or something much bigger than just a local thing. Well, I've got a pot here with some stars, lots of stars. I don't know if you can see, but I'm just sprinkling them around here, around the cross. Because in actual fact, like Esther was a star, you're all stars. God loves each and every one of you. And he's got a plan for you in your life. And it might just be at some point that he calls you to stand up for something and that it takes a lot of courage. So I'd like you to remember the story of Esther and remember how she had courage to do the right thing that she felt God wanted her to do. And look what the result was. All the Jewish people were saved. They would have all been killed if she hadn't have done that. So just remember you're a star too. And in other places of the Bible, we're told to shine like stars for Jesus. 
So when we're challenged and when we're not feeling perhaps very brave, but we know in our heart we should be standing up for something, then pray that Jesus will be with you and give you the courage and give you the words and have faith that he will do that for you as he promises. So let's just say a prayer together and then we'll say the Lord's Prayer. Dear God, thank you for the story of Esther and what it teaches us about courage and knowing what is wrong and what is right. Help us to show courage, to be brave and stand up for what is right. Help us to do this even when it is difficult. Amen. So we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, it's lovely to hear the pigeon cooing in the background as long, uh, along with the other birds too. So I hope that hasn't been too much of a distraction, but great to be outdoors, surrounded by God's creation all the same. Go well, have a good week, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love today and forever. Amen.